Hello, welcome back. In the last video, I detailed the golden age of gospel. In this video, I'm going to detail the period that succeeded that, the urban contemporary period of gospel. The urban contemporary area of, era of gospel isn't exactly one era, but it's defined by its versatility and blend of popular music influences from genres that, had, that it had a big role in developing. It wasn't just a one-way street of genres influencing gospel, though. In this video, I will detail how music of the black church then and now continued to be an inspiration on people of all faiths and artists of all genres. Beginning in the golden age, gospel artists flirted with blending many sounds using different instruments and choir sections. Around this time in the 30s and 40s, Sister Rosetta Thorpe's electric guitar techniques influenced Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Eric Clapton, and the Rolling Stones, helping pave the way for rock and roll. Sister Willie Mae Forrest Smith, who did not commercialize her music, rarely recording up publishing music how, uh, however her vocal techniques would be duplicated by every singer she made contact with on the revival circuit she did not record her first album until 1975 at the age of 67 the caravans launched the career of many prominent female gospel singers including Albertina Walker Dorothy Norwood, Inez Andrews, Loretta Holloway, and Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar, the queen of gospel music, also known as the first lady of gospel music, is essentially the bridge between the golden age and the urban contemporary era of gospel. She began recording at the age of 12 for, for the federal recording label, eventually joining the caravans in 1958 at the age of 19. Her consistent reinvigoration of gospel helped pave the way for artists like Yolanda Adams, the Clark Sisters, B.B. and C.C. Winans, and Kirk Franklin. Beginning in the 1960s, though, genres that gospel helped cultivate, such as rock and roll, soul, and funk, were dominating the charts, making matters, making matters worse. Many artists who started as gospel artists now ventured into making secular music as prophets and celebrity of artists grew at a much faster pace than in decades prior. Touring conditions also greatly improved. Even though gospel fell behind in commercialization, those who kept the faith and stayed true to their message were never concerned with the money or the fame anyway. The new generation of gospel just took certain sounds of popular music as was done in decades prior and crafted a sound for a broader audience. The Clark Sisters, being Detroit natives, were inspired by soul and the Motown sound of the 60s. They have together been an inspiration to Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, Faith Evans, Kelly Price, Mary Mary, Kelly Rowland, and Queen Latifah. The Winans family, also Detroit natives, are influential to gospel R&B, neo-soul, and a host of other genres. Dubbed the first family of gospel, they have together won more than 20 Grammy Awards, with 12 of them being won by Cece, the most by a female gospel artist. Yolanda Adams, the queen of contemporary gospel, is the first gospel artist to win an American Music Award, and Kirk Franklin, the reigning king of urban gospel, has won 16 Grammy Awards. So while the popularity has somewhat faded from Tasha Cobbs to Fred Hammond to Hezekiah Walker and beyond, gospel is in good hands. I'm currently working on a series going into the subgenres as well as the biographies of all of the gospel artists and their catalogs that I named prior, as well as artists that I did not name. And that is to be released shortly. 
However, my next video will be begin my background to the blues series. Thanks for tuning in, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.